My name is Vince Andriani, Service Manager in charge of IT here at The Answer Company. I'd like to welcome everyone to The Answer Company's Propel 2021 virtual client event. As stated earlier, today we will dig deeper into ransomware. We'll get a better understanding of what ransomware is. We will review the history of ransomware. We'll get a better understanding of the cost of ransomware. We'll outline what organizations can do to build a good defense from ransomware. And lastly, we'll explore some predictions of the future of ransomware. So let's get a better understanding of what ransomware is. Ransomware is a type of malware program that allows for attackers to encrypt your important data. Once encrypted, you will not be able to open the data, and in some cases, certain programs will stop working. Then the attackers will request a ransom, usually a fee, in return for the decryption keys. Once you receive the decryption keys, in theory, you should be able to decrypt your data and once again return to operations. To better understand ransomware, let's dig into the history first. The first known incident of ransomware was recorded in 1989 by Harvard-trained revolutionary biologist Joseph L. Popp. Popp conducted the attack by distributing 20,000 floppy disks to AIDS researchers from 90 countries that attended the World, World Health Organization's International AIDS Conference in Stockholm. Popp claimed that the disks contained a program that analyzed an individual's risk of acquiring AIDS through a risk questionnaire. However, the disk contained a malware program that hid the file directories, locked file names, and demanded the victim send $189 to a Panama bank account. In 2005 is when we see the ransomware program start to evolve by beginning to use more advanced encryption methods. Prior to this, the encryption that was used was quite easy to decrypt. But by 2005, the encryption method methods used proved that the encrypted files were not as easily decrypted, and most likely not at all, unless you had the decryption key from the cyber criminals. The cryptovirus that really kicked off modern day ransomware was called CryptoLocker. Developed in 2013, it was the first ransomware that demanded payment via Bitcoin. By 2016, ransomware is everywhere, and large organizations are reporting more and more attacks. This is when we start to see cyber criminals become more aggressive. Instead of luring a computer user, be it at home or be it at work, into initiating the attack, they were now looking on the internet for open ports that organizations left open. They would then use password guessing or brute force attacks to gain entry. Once inside the system, they could then initiate the ransomware attacks. In 2017, the ransomware program called Petya arrives on the scene. This was used by Russia to attack Ukrainian organizations such as banks, ministries, newspapers, and electricity firms. This was one of the first publicly known attempts of using ransomware as cyber warfare. Also in 2017, the large shipping and container giant Maersk was attacked by a ransomware infection. This caused $300 million in damages. This event actually forced the U.S. Coast Guard to change their policies in regards to requirements prior to docking at U.S. shipping ports. But as you can see, this event showed that any organization is a target. WannaCry, another ransomware virus that appeared in 2017, was the first ransomware to use localized languages. What this means is that if the ransomware virus identified the system was configured for English, the messaging would show in English. If the ransomware identified that the computer system was set up in any of another 20 different languages, it would change the messaging language to reflect that system. This showed us that the ransomware was going professional when it could actually localize itself. It was no longer the lonely hacker in his or her basement, but more of an organized entity looking to maximize the spread across multiple countries. Ransomware destruction maturity has changed since the beginning. It started off by targeting the consumer through their personal computers at home. Unsuspecting users would be presented with an email or website that included the ransomware program. The program would execute immediately on the local machine without concern of spreading to other machines. It would encrypt the files and show the user an alert asking for a small amount of money in around the $300 range. Over time, cyber criminals started focusing on corporations and organizational networks. At this point, they would start to search around the network, trying to find key administrative passwords, map out the network, and identify all vulnerable systems. The next step would be to try to encrypt as many devices as possible. Here's where they would start to ask for varying amounts of ransom. 
based on the type and size of the organization, as opposed to the small amounts with the, sm with the home computer system. Today, cyber criminals utilize what is called a stub program, which is a small part of the overall ransomware program. This stub program breaks into the systems and dials home to a command center. This command center is a command and control admin portal that the cyber criminals can see the thousands of systems that the stub programs have infiltrated. At this point, the hackers have access to the systems and can de decide which ones have the highest value. They will spend days, weeks, and months reviewing the system and identifying key systems and key data. They will also be updating their ransomware program many times to allow them to circumvent securities currently in place. The cyber criminals may spend weeks or months in the system before initiating the full attack. Recent reports state that these bad actors are in the system on average of eight months before announcing their presence. This timeline gives them enough time to ensure that they have covered enough of the system to force the organization to say that they will pay the ransom. Typically, the cyber criminals do not want to cause complete destruction of the system because their goal is to actually get the money. To expand on how ransomware has gotten even more sophisticated, bad actors are spending more time in the system doing much more analysis and research on the victims trying to determine what to encrypt and the appropriate ransom amount. And now, these bad actors don't even need to understand hacking. All they need to do is go out and purchase a prepackaged application, which has now been branded as Ransomware as a Service. Ransomware as a Service is continuously being updated to constantly avoid antivirus detection. These bad actors can now rent this service, or buy the service, or direct the service. The ransomware program will utilize the built-in and trusted tools of the system. This allows the ransomware program to operate covertly and undetected. The most common method for recovery from a ransomware attack is to recover the data from the backup and disaster recovery system. The developers of the backup software have tried to help mitigate the hijacking of backup data by allowing the users to self-encrypt the backup data with their own keys. And because you cannot encrypt something that is already encrypted, this should protect your data, your backup data. Well, the bad actors have identified this and are now re-encrypting the backup data with a new key that they were able to generate because they have administrative access. But do you really have one? So now we have seen how ransomware has evolved until recently. But now the cyber criminals are taking it to another level. They are noticing that victims are starting to refuse to pay the ransoms as the organization's security practices are catching up to the hackers. In an effort to ensure that their revenue continues to come in, they are being more aggressive in their tactics. What the cyber criminals have realized is that the access to the system is the real gold, not the encryption of the data. While they are still encrypting the data, that is the last thing that they are actually initiating. First off, they explore the system and record every possible username and password. These could be everything from service account credentials to enterprise admin credentials. Keep in mind that they're in the system for many months and they are watching everything. So if a staff member does some personal online banking, they will try to get that information. Or even worse, they may be able to collect personal health information and sell it on the dark web. By retrieving the system's passwords, this allows the bad actors to utilize this information for future use and future gain. The next thing they will do is spend time exploring and listening to the system. They are assessing the most information that is stored in the system, be it just plain data, personal information, or maybe even by reading the executive's emails. They will then copy the data to their data centers and reach back to the company they have just compromised. Threaten them by telling them that if they don't pay the ransom, then they will sell the information. For example, maybe to a competitor or another hacker. Additionally, the bad actors may threaten to publicly share private information like financial information or private emails of the organization's customers. They may even go as far as contacting the media to publicly state that the cyber criminals have hacked the system. This could really affect the public reputation of the organization, especially if the organization had private information like health information. But even other information, like how certain high-level individuals feel about certain clients or staff. Another tactic is they will threaten to attack or even initiate an attack on the organization's customers. 
They can do this because they spent the time and effort to meticulously exfiltrate as much information as possible. They will use the contact information to send emails that appear to be from the compromise organization, but will carry the ransomware program. Or they send emails to the organization's customers telling the customer that the organization has been hacked and that bad actors have important information about the customer. And if the organization does not pay, then the bad actors will share the information on the internet. So what are the costs of ransomware? As you can see, there are great repercussions when an organization experiences an attack that can result in data loss and or computer system downtime. The amount that cyber criminals demand varies drastically. The older and less intricate attacks are typically lower, like in the hundreds or low thousands. But the larger, more developed attacks can get into the hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. The ransom amount for larger attacks sometimes equates to the size and revenue of the organization. So an attack on a multi-million dollar organization is typically higher than an attack on a small mom and pop shop. It is very difficult to get an exact calculation of the true cost of ransomware attacks due to the fact that it, not all attacks have been reported. Additionally, most organizations will not include all cost factors of an attack. When calculating the financial impact of an attack, paying the ransom is only one part. The organization must also take into account the following. One, the cost of system recovery, especially if third-party remediation teams are engaged. Ransomware recovery and remediation has become a niche industry, and the cost to engage these firms can be quite costly. Two, the cost of operational downtime. Each employee has a cost associated to them, and if they cannot work due to the system being unavailable, that is a cost to an organization that must be taken into account. Three, the cost of production downtime. Organizations today typically run fairly lean and cannot afford to have their production lines sit idle. And four, the cost of reputation. This one is the hardest point to quantify financially, but repairing an organization's reputation can easily outweigh the cost of properly defending their systems. The biggest concern with a ransomware attack is the inability to recover from the attack. In most cases, organizations that cannot recover from the attack will need to shut their doors and would cease to operate indefinitely. Before we dig into securing systems from ransomware attacks, we need to understand how cyber criminals initiate an attack. We can sort these attacks into three categories, social engineering, open access to the internet, and unpatched systems. Social engineering takes many forms, but when it comes to ransomware, phishing is the most common type of an attack. With ransomware, phishing refers to an attempt to steal sensitive information by email, typically in the form of a username and password, in order to utilize the stolen information to gain access to the system. Additionally, these phishing attempts may also carry the ransomware payload as an attachment. By masquerading as a reputable source with an enticing request, an attacker lures in the victim in order to trick them. Drive-by attacks are also another form of social engineering. A drive-by cyber attack or drive-by download attack is now a very, very popular attack amongst bad actors and is designed to install malware on unsuspected users' PCs when they visit an, an infected website. It targets the victims through their internet browser, either by luring them to a malicious website set up by criminals or when they visit what would normally be a perfectly legitimate website, but which has been recently compromised by hackers to use for the purpose of attacking potential victims. The second most common attack vector is the remote desktop protocol. Remote desktop is a legitimate tool that allows IT administrators and users to gain remote access to their systems. Since this open port is an industry standard, it is easy for bad actors to attack these ports and guess the usernames and passwords. Another but less common attack is when an organization opens other more obscure ports. Attackers will scan these ports and use brute force attempts to gain access to the system. Once, the sy once in the system, these bad actors will attempt to elevate their privileges. Unpatched systems are the least common attack vector, but still an option for most cyber criminals. As operating systems and software become old or legacy software, the developers stop providing security updates or patches, thus leaving the system vulnerable to newly discovered security flaws. A good example is Windows 7. 
Microsoft declared Windows 7 end of life and stopped providing updates in January of 2020. Therefore, any new security holes that have been identified after that date will not be addressed. Cyber criminals know this and have developed programs to identify these machines and exploit the vulnerabilities. So what can an organization do to ensure that their systems and data are protected? The most important and primary defense mechanism is to ensure that they are following security best practices and these best practices are current. It is important that all organizations utilize an enterprise level firewall with current support contracts and have been updated to the latest production firmware. Most of these firewalls also include a built-in malicious activity scanning service. These services should be activated and set up to the standards outlined by the manufacturer. Additionally, organizations should utilize a centralized antivirus anti-malware program. This program should be configured to automatically update itself with the latest updates, perform mitigation routines when it identifies malicious activity, and alert the appropriate people when, a malicious, when malicious activity has been identified. In the past, the default response to a ransomware attack was, we're okay, we have a good backup. While a good backup is the best way to recover your files, cyber criminals know that most organizations rely on backups to mitigate an attack. So these cyber criminals now go into great lengths to make sure that your backup data is not recoverable. There are a few best practices an organization should undertake to ensure that their backups are in fact in good shape. One, run regular recovery tests. Two, ensure your backups are encrypted. Three, ensure that you have a copy of your backups offsite. Four, create an air gap in your backups. An air gap is to create a backup that is not accessible from your computer system. Some might call this an offline copy. Another great security tool is multi-factor authentication. MFA, sometimes called two-factor authentication, requires a user to verify their identity through another avenue. This may be through a text message or an authentication application. Since social engineering is the most common attack vector for ransomware attackers, most people would think that organizations would place the most attention to minimize this. But this is probably the most ignored security practice in most organizations. So how do we defend against social engineering? The best way is to create a cybersecurity awareness training program. There are many third-party developers that have created great training platforms that will help educate your weakest security link, your staff. If an organization does all the above, but decides to leave well-known ports open to their internal network, they are just wasting their time. Utilizing cybersecurity industry standards like VPNs and security certificates, organizations should not need to leave their ports open unsecured. The patching of devices and systems can seem daunting, but they are vital to the protection of the organization's systems and data. Coupling the patching of all systems with the replacement of unsupported systems will ensure that cyber criminals will not be able to exploit any vulnerabilities. So what can we expect in 2021 and beyond? Here are a few predictions. As the work environment has begun to change and the remote work is becoming more and more common, cyber criminals will begin to place more efforts toward compromising personal devices. As the internet of things becomes more prevalent, IoT being devices connected to the internet, cyber criminals will be focusing on these devices as a gateway into the network. Cyber criminals will continue to focus and refine their business strategies, effectively creating a streamlined ransomware for higher service. As we can see today, the business of ransomware is just that, a business. These cyber criminals are no longer one or two highly technical people working in a basement. They are very well organized nefarious organizations built very much like any other business. As the developers of the ransomware applications refine their products and prove that the business model is lucrative, more and more of these large cyber, cyber hacking organizations will appear. Cyber criminals will be focusing more on the public utility infrastructure. As you may recall recently, a major petroleum distributor in the eastern United States had to stop delivering gas because of a ransomware attack. This concludes our session on ransomware. Unfortunately with ransomware, things are going to get worse. How bad I cannot say, but it will definitely get worse. If organizations place good security and recovery practices in place, they have a very good chance of mitigating many effects of an attack on their systems. Mm -hmm.